I'll be honest, I'm a bit nervous of our next guest, somewhat overawed. This is a man who has crossed conversational swords with everyone from Sir Paul McCartney and Stephen Fry to Paul Daniels and Debbie McGee. Why am I nervous? Well, let me put it out there. The man's a comedy hero of mine. From his peerless stand-up shows, through a smattering of top film appearances, through to his outstanding turn as misanthropic bookseller Bernard Black in Black Books, the man is a comedic titan. It's Dylan Moran. Good morning. Hi there. Now, have I said your surname wrong? No, no, I don't give a damn about that. I um, really care. I have never Bob's spoken to Paul Daniels or his wife or Stephen Fryer or any. I have spoken to Stephen, but uh, who are all these people you mentioned? Well, I, what you see, I, the way that I read it was you misleading because I was talking about how I have spoken to those people. Oh, right, okay. But the, despite that, these big names wasn't phased by them, but I'm more phased meeting you. Don't oh, I see, I see. see the, yes, yes. Obviously, the delivery was terrible. Yes, well, I don't mind the fact that you're quivering. Just get on with it, just will you? Just crack on, yeah. Just the sooner this is over, the better. Um, no, I'm going to take my time over this. Okay, do. You, you know. enjoy your fear. <laughs> Live with the... No. You know what Paul McKenna says? Turn fear into excitement. I don't know what Paul McKenna says, because with everything he does, he says, I will put you to sleep, and then you won't be fat. <laughs> so, I don't know how anybody knows what Paul McKenna says, because he says, I will, I will, you will go asleep and You're stop smoking. Asleep, yeah. And of course it's easy to be less fat and less smoky mm. when you're asleep. <laughs> That's easy. Because you don't tend to eat the butter or smoke the Benson yeah. and Hedges when you're asleep. Yeah. He's, but he's hit the nail on the head, really, hasn't he? He has. The For half the day, I will make you less fat and smoky. <laughs> <laughs> fat you're, and smoky. When you're listening to me. <laughs> he's great. He's on next week. But you're back on the road, right? Now, when does a comedian know it's time to get to get back out there, Dylan? Is it because you've just this dam bursting with comic ideas and you need to exercise them? It's exactly what it is. It's totally artistically motivated. Of course it is. And uh, it's because I just can't resist being born away by the tide of ideas, as you've yeah. described them, by the cherubim who are actually... <laughs> Uh, a host of intellectual fantasies that have come to kidnap me again. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with money. <laughs> I want to say that right now. I want to say that, I want to put that out there right now. It's got nothing to do with economic necessity, fear, insecurity, middle-aged, the cognizance of death being literally in an envelope that I'm just opening right now. <laughs> nothing to do with any of that. It's all about the um, ideas and the... Um, ideological uh, tide yeah, that yeah. I am actually creating. And people say, you know, uh, Dylan Moran, okay, uh, surreal, misanthropic, shambolic. What, what do you say to that? I don't know where they get this stuff. I don't, I don't, don't, but I don't, I don't think that. I mean, I've just met you, but you don't give me that impression. Why do don't they say svelte, spongy? <laughs> <laughs> spongy would be good, wouldn't it? Feels like broccoli. <laughs> if you run your fingers over them. I don't know. <laughs> that would make a difference. I, I, I actually, this is true, about eight years ago, I was in a central London pub. Well, it was more, more of a cafe. And you were in it. I'm not, I'm not stalking you. I promise. This is, this is just purely accidental. And you were sitting a couple of uh, seats in front of me. And what unfolded was, it, it was almost as though it, would, it could easily have been a moment from Black Books. You seemed confused by your mobile phone. You ran outside in a panic. You ran back in. Um, you were you were again confused by the mobile phone, and and it, it just it, it seemed as though I was watching, uh, you know, some uh, uh, almost a written episode. Would you say how much of of your your own personality is in something like Bernard in Black Books? Oh yeah, there's a bit in there, you know, uh, not 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 the whole job lot I, uh, because Bernard is a sociopath, so <laughs> I would be in jail or dead if I was Bernard Black, but um, or both, but. <laughs> Yeah, the mobile phone probably confused me. It probably rang or did something yeah. obnoxious like that, you know? That's the thing with these devices, you can't trust them. No, I know, I know. And for people of our age, they, they are, you know, so they're not something that we instinctively know how to use. No, they're totally, like totally unpredictable. And the children, children, the generation now who are growing up with these things, they're just the square extremities at the end of their bodies. They're just in extensions of their being. They... they they're plugged in all the time, but it's terrifying, uh, isn't it? it is. Yeah, it, I, I, I'm planning to be dead <laughs> b before it all really kicks off. 
<laughs> but it's true because you do some lovely stuff and have done historically through your stand up about about kids and and about your you know the sort of relationship between adults and children. And like one of my favourite things that I've heard anybody say is the way you describe toddlers as kind of like when you've got a toddler, it's a bit like being with a very small drunk person. And the parallels there are very sim. There are real strong parallels, aren't Ch they? Children are. If you have children in your life, they're huge. You have to talk about them because mm. you do talk about them. You, 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 all, all, you think about them all the time. They're a huge influence. They're your sun and moon, really. Mm. So, um, I mean, I, I, children, to be fair, children are, are much better than, than, than major trunks. They, they're, they're better than most adults. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. In, in terms of uh, conversation, just because of what they will elect as a topic. Yeah. It's incredible the stuff that they come out with, and, and as you say, if you've got any kind of comedic aspect to your mind, you can't help but have it tickled all the well, time. Well, you just have to be, not even that, but you just have to be alive, just have mm. to be listening to these people. Yeah. It's extraordinary, the, the, the way they segue from one yeah. thing to another. So my lunch, what I had for my lunch, and there was a pudding, or there wasn't a pudding, and then, um, how big a spider would you be if you could be a spider? <laughs> <laughs> you can't see that coming, but you it's have to respect field. it. Like, uh, just last week, I think it was, Arthur, my eldest, lifted up his sh shirt and said, Daddy, where are my nipples? <laughs> like, he thought he'd lost them. Who has not really been in that them. position? Yeah, yeah. We have all that. felt like that at one time or another. Sometimes, several times during the same day. I mean, obviously, the, the yeah, yeah, the tour starts sort of imminently, and is, 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 are, you, are you looking forward to it? Yes, I am. I am. I have to, because... Yeah. <laughs> uh, because it's happening, so if I don't look forward to it, it'll be like this morning when I was late. Um, uh, yeah, I am, I am. Uh, it's been, uh, whatever it is, a year and a half or so uh, since I was on. So, you know, some people go out there and they work the clubs all the time yeah. to to work their show in. Keep the chops up. Yeah, and I don't. I, I, I sit in, in a room. Save it all. I, I do, I sit in a room and write it, and then I go out. But also, you've got a, you've got a captive audience, the people are buying tickets, they want to come and see you, so they're, they're either going to be throwing bottles of pee at you, are they? No, they're thinking? not going to be throwing bottled pee. <laughs> they, maybe loose pee. But, <laughs> um... Uh, yeah, the, the people people come, and I'm very, I'm very, I'm always, uh, I'm always uh, deeply um, moved by yeah. that fact. Well, um, I mean, I hate to uh, hit you with this information just before you're about to go on the road yourself, but um, you do have direct competition. I, um, I've done a stand-up gig. I How did, did that go? Pretty well, didn't it, Lisa? You know, it's pretty. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't use the word awesome because it's not for me to use the word awesome. <laughs> it's for your mother. It's for my mum to say that. <laughs> but, you know, any, any advice for nascent comics coming up like myself? Who well, what did you find when you, if you did a gig then, you, you, what, what was the experience like? It was, I've done one or two before just because, because I've been forced to and uh, I, I've quite enjoyed it, I must admit. It's quite a thrill, isn't it? It's it is, like being yeah. On a, being on a fast horse. Yeah, it is. And it's, I tell you what's very thrilling is to do a bad one. Oh, I bet. Oh, I can't imagine how horrible that is, though. That's very thrilling. Uh, I, it's been a while, it's been a, a, lot, a lot of years, but um, when you're learning, um, you should do a few more, because then you you'll... you feel that you really have to have done that? You'll get to do a bad one. Oh, you yeah. have to do a bad yeah. one, where everybody hates you. <laughs> <laughs> and everything you say makes it worse, including the words like the and 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 hello. <laughs> so, um, now that, that's quite a buzz, actually. Yeah. Do you do you get a perverse pleasure out of? Really uh, yeah, dying? you can do. Stuart Lee is a great one to watch actually for, for when he's annoying the audience deliberately and um, and he carries on doing it. It's like he's poking at their fillings with a piece of tin foil. Um, that takes some balls to do that. Really. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but but uh, it is obviously it's a, it's an adrenaline charge, mm. uh, whatever way it goes. Even if they set you on fire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. One way or another, that's adrenaline, isn't yes, it? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I can always make myself available to uh, you know for warm ups. Well, and thank you like very that. much. No problem at all. Um, and just my, a last question: When might we see you uh, on celluloid again? You know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm uh, no plans. No, I mean when when the Jane Austen people ring up and ask me, will I be so and so's mum? That'll be the next time. <laughs> I want a bonnet. I'm not doing it unless there's a bonnet. I will be. Uh, so Dylan will be performing as Emma's mother uh, in the new screen adaptation of Emma yes. on BBC One in the autumn. We simply can't wait. Uh, Dylan, uh, honestly, thanks for coming in. Real pleasure. You're a, you genuinely are one of our sort of big comedy heroes. It's lovely to speak to you. Thank you, Sean. Uh, Mr. Dylan.